When you worry about a particular speaking situation, for example, you have to go to a meeting or a function where you have to introduce yourself. You have to give your name. You have to tell what your job title is, where you live, where you work. And you start to worry about that. That's what we call negative anticipation. You can negatively anticipate upcoming words, phrases, or sounds, and you can negatively anticipate upcoming speaking situations, professional or social. So you can shorten negative anticipation and call it worry. But what's the difference between worry and negative anticipation? Well, primary difference is that worry is a little more general. Yes, you can worry about some specific things, but we would call that negative anticipation because you're anticipating something and it's specific, but you're anticipating it in a negative way. So that's why we call it negative anticipation. So in today's video, we're going to talk about a little bit more about what negative anticipation is, the sources of negative anticipation, and the impact it can have on you. You're already familiar with it, right? Because you probably experience it if you're watching this video. And the thing about negative anticipation and worry, and I'll probably just use the word, those words interchangeably, is that when you start to worry about a specific word or phrase or speaking situation, and I've seen people do it on words, often their speech begins to mess up, if you will, deteriorate before they ever get to the word. So just the experience of negatively anticipating can begin to affect how you're speaking in the present currently. So you haven't said the word, but just thinking about it can cause you to feel anxious. So let's talk a little bit about what negative anticipation is. And it comes from a Latin root, right? Anti, meaning before, something before. Cipare, meaning to take, to take or to grab. Also, you'll see anti anticipatio, anticipatio. Let's look also at another Latin word, anticipatas, anticipatas. And when we look at the Latin root, essentially it means to go out and grab a hold of something that hasn't happened yet and to bring it back into your present. Right. So what we're doing when we're worrying or negatively anticipating in our minds, we are going out, we're going forward and we're grabbing hold of a situation that hasn't occurred yet, be it a word or an entire situation, and we're bringing it back into our present experience. Now, what do you think that does? Well, if it's negative and you're bringing something back into your present experience that's negative, it's going to cause you to become anxious, fearful, doubtful, right? Nervous. And all of these things have a physical, a physiological, a psychological, and emotional impact or effect on us. So let's talk a little bit about some of the effects negative anticipation has on us. One is anxiety, right? like we just talked about, stress, worry, fear, doubt, nervousness, sweating, your stomach starts to ache, you start to feel uncomfortable, you have to go to the bathroom, loss of sleep, right? There are some of you out there, when you know you have something important coming up, you actually have a loss of sleep. You can't sleep. I've talked to clients who said they couldn't sleep for days, right? Or they couldn't sleep the night before because they were worrying or negatively anticipating something. So it can cause us to feel anxious and all the things that come along with that. The next thing that it can cause, and it can cause a lot more, but we're going to just categorize and, and summarize them in these two things. One is avoidance. We don't want to feel bad. So what happens is when we begin to negatively anticipate, we start what? Avoiding speaking situations. We start avoiding speaking situations. And when we do this, it causes us to lose out on opportunities. When you avoid something, it also causes the fear to grow, right? Because now that you're avoiding it, every time you think about it, you start to feel bad. You don't want to feel bad. And so you do something else. You avoid it. You say, no, I can't do that. Or 
no, I don't want to do that. You just don't answer. You don't respond. You don't make the phone calls. You don't go out socially. You don't take advantage of professional opportunities because of negatively or negative anticipation and worry. Does this make sense? So two things that happen, you become anxious, which has a physical, a physiological effect, an emotional effect on you. And it causes you to avoid. And when you avoid things, you lose opportunities, you miss opportunities, and your fears actually grow. It gets worse. Okay, so now let's talk about the source, the source of negative anticipation. The primary source of negative anticipation is your previous experience, your previous experiences, right? So this means, we mean when we say previous experiences, anything that's happened to you before related to, for example, your speech, if you've gotten stuck introducing yourself, you've had an embarrassing moment uh, at a meeting or giving a presentation or in a conversation, then those experiences are brought forward. How are they brought forward? Well, what our brains do is our brains, when we're in a particular speaking situation or a new one, our brain wants to use patterns because every time we find ourselves in a speaking situation or in any situation, really, it doesn't matter if it's speaking or not, your brain wants to be as efficient as it can. So how does it do this? Well, it looks for, it looks for patterns, right? It goes back and it says, have we done this before? Have we experienced this before? If we did, what did we do? How did we handle it? How did we think? How did we feel? How did we react and respond? How did we behave? It says, okay, well, this is similar. We'll just behave in the same way. What that does is it allows us to conserve energy. It allows our brain to conserve energy. It doesn't have to come up with a whole new methodology, with a whole new way, a whole new pattern of dealing with something because we've had similar experiences in the past. So it says, oh, We've already done this. This has already happened to us. So let's bring this forward and say, well, this is how we're going to behave, think, feel, and speak in the present or in the future. So now, when you have something that's coming up, like uh, you need to introduce yourself, for example, or you're going to be giving a meeting update, your brain goes back and says, have we ever done this before? How did we perform? How did we do? Okay, that's probably how we're going to do it this time. Right. So it's very, very difficult to get out of that, but you can. And that's what we're going to talk about mostly in the next video, which is going to be coming in the next email if you're watching this in an email series. So we'll be talking about how some specific steps that you can take to actually change your experiences starting from now going forward. Now, I'm going to be sharing with you some stories about clients in future videos. I'm actually going to be sharing their videos. One such client, her name is Mona, and she found that she would just not speak up as much. In fact, I have lots of other clients. I've, not most of my clients have experiences, but we're talking about her specifically because I'll be sharing her case study and her videos that you'll be able to see. But she said, you know what? I just avoided. I didn't speak up as much. I didn't take advantage of opportunities because I negatively anticipated. I worried about if I were going to stutter or not, if I were going to block, if I were going to actually be able to say what I wanted. And I didn't want to feel embarrassed. I didn't want to look incompetent. And so essentially I would just avoid or I would just uh, not speak up as much or not say as much. Has that ever happened to you? If it has, I want you to continue watching this little series and reading the emails and check out Mona's case study as well as all the other ones that I share because they're going to be instructional and inspirational as to how they dealt with it. Okay, so continue to watch these videos. If you happen to be watching this video on YouTube, then go ahead and like the video and subscribe to our channel. We also want you to know that the fastest way to transform your speech is in the Pro 90D speech system. And we can accelerate that sometimes by 10 times or more by working with myself or Farouk one-on-one, -on -one. that is working with a coach. When you work with a coach, like many of our other clients have, it accelerates the process because you're more accountable, you get evaluation and feedback, and we help you stay encouraged. So we'll talk more about that later. But 
if you experience negative anticipation, fear not, because I'm going to be sharing with you exactly what you can do to reduce and or eliminate. All of us get a little anxious about certain things. Every single person. It depends on the situation. It depends on the experiences. But there are things that you can do to reduce it. There are things that you can do to completely eliminate it in most cases. But here's the thing. Even if you reduce it, right, even if you reduce it, you're going to learn how to perform well despite having worried about something, despite feeling anxious. You're going to learn how to perform well in the present. Thank you so much for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.